What's up, what's up divas, and what's up, what's up divos, it's your girl April, and you guys already know what time it is, it is Wednesday, so without further ado, we are going to kick off this real talk, but before, you guys always know that I'll always keep you up on what's going on in my life, if there's any drama, the tea, whatever, I always let you guys know. So first of all, it wasn't a really a lazy day, but you know what? I did get up, did my makeup. You ever have that moment if you wear a wig or weave and you just, you, you want to get made up, you do your face and then you're like, I don't feel like putting on that wig today. I don't feel like wearing a wig. So I did actually have one of those moments today where I just really did not feel like wearing a wig today. So yes, I went ahead and, um, got out a scarf and wrapped the damn thing around my head like I just really I just didn't feel like it I think it has a lot to do with, I just didn't feel like being bothered with it I just didn't feel like having to brush it out during the day I just didn't feel like feeling it on my neck I just didn't feel like situating it blending it in trying to do too much because I just did not feel like it so I felt like this well my face is made up I'm just going to put on a nice cute scarf and I'll be done with it. And that's that. And I'm going to put on some sweatpants and a tank top. And I'm going to be in some flip flops and I'm going to be done with it. Because why else? So at least I did have the opportunity to do my face. Because I really didn't feel like doing that. So that's how my day has been going. Now, second of all. Now, you guys, um, I'm not really sure. Some of you may have seen my latest video. It was a makeup tutorial video. It was before and after um, using only um, black-owned makeup brands. Unfortunately, I was kind of bummed out when I found out that Black Ops was no longer owned by a black um, CEO, a black owner. Kind of bummed out about that. And Sasha Cosmetics too, but you know it is what it is. It still um, served the purpose of at least trying. Anyway, in the video, I did say the word African American. And I felt the need to say the word African American because um, that's what the freak I am, an African American, right? So anyway, I said that in the video. I'm not really sure when I said it in the video. However, I did tell you guys last week in my real talk, I don't like people that leave stupid ass comments. People, you know what I'm saying? I just let the comments slide. But then there are the days like, okay, you done caught me on the wrong motherfucking day. And, bitch, I'm about to go off on your fucking ass. Don't write no dumb shit on my fucking comments. Like, on some serious shit. Don't write no dumb shit. Because I'm don't. i not one for the dumb shit. I hate dumb shit. On a serious level, I hate dumb shit. Stay, or just say dumb shit that's just not even worth it to me. Like... Not even that it's not even worth it, but I just don't like when people say dumb stuff, do dumb stuff. I just, it just like really, really irritates me. So anyway, in the comments section of that video, now I know everybody does have their own beliefs. If you, if you believe in certain religion, that is your belief, meaning that is your belief. Your is the key word, your, your belief. That's what you feel strongly about, power to the people, whatever, that's how you feel. Everybody has a belief in something, whether it be religion, their race, their economic situation, whatever it be, um, their relationship with another person, everybody has their own beliefs in doing things a certain way. And that's great because that's what makes the world go round. Everyone has to be different. No one has to be the same. And that's just what makes the world different and what makes the world go round, point blank, period. So when you have your own belief, that's great. However, I really don't feel like you should try to disrespect anybody with your belief. So because I said the word African American, I'm not sure she's a, if she is a subscriber or what have you, but she did watch the video. So she left a comment and I'm going to put it up on the screen so you guys can see it, but I'm going to kind of like black her name out. So she goes, I didn't know you were from Africa talking about me with four question marks. You are American since we are on a black tip. I really wish we would stop saying that. White people don't say Caucasian American. They say American. We have to stop. The word stop is all in capitalized. Saying that. We have to stop saying that we're African Americans. It sounds stupid. 
capital letters, all for the word stupid. And I know you are far from being stupid. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So first of all, you just came at me and just said, I didn't know you were from Africa. Sweetheart, you don't really know where the fuck I'm from, okay? You don't know where I'm from. Second of all, I'm not really concerned with what white people call themselves because I'm not one of them. I'm not Caucasian, okay? And they do call themselves Caucasian Americans, white Americans. That's what the fuck they be calling themselves to. But that's not my concern because I'm I'm an African American, okay? That's what freak I am. So if I want to call myself an African American, that's, that's what the hell I'm going to call myself, okay? What do you want me to call myself? A black American? Because black is a color. It's a shade. And the last time I looked at my skin, it is not the color shade black. It is more or less like a beige color. But you best believe a bitch is a black person. I'm an African American, okay? We can call ourselves black if we want to. We can call ourselves African American. As long as we know what the hell we are, meaning we know that we are of African American or African descendant, that we are a black descendant or whatever people of color, then we can call ourselves whatever we want to call ourselves. But when the lack of disrespect came in is where she was like, I know you are far from being stupid, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And you just kind of, kind of came at me about the whole African-American thing. <clears throat> so I said back in return to her, wow, did you really just come on my video and say dumb shit to me? I don't know what the fuck you are and where you are, but... Where I am from, we don't disrespect each other. You feel me? So don't come on my video trying to act better than thou, okay? And why not play smart? Why not you play smart right now and have a seat because I'm an African American and I'm proud of it. So that is what I took a screenshot of and said what I had to say to her about how I felt. Now, I always find it so hilarious when people always try to judge people and push their beliefs and things off on others. I mean, like I said, it's your belief. You believe in what you want to believe. But when you say something so stupid to someone or just if you say something disrespectful to someone, anyone in general, and then they come back at you, you can't get mad. I don't feel like you have any room to get mad. Okay, so I said what I said to you because I felt like, you know what? Don't be disrespectful. Don't be disrespectful. Bottom line, don't be disrespectful. So here we go. So this time she comes back, you know what I mean? And this is what she says after I told her I'm proud of it. Won't you be the smart one to have a seat and don't be disrespectful? She goes, that's fine. I won't come back. I'm Deb. I'm I'm New Orleans and I'm American and proud of it. I'm going I'm going to play real smart and not get a bunch of fucked up looking tattoos all over my arms. Laugh out loud. So because I told you to to not be disrespectful and how I felt about being proud, you feel the need to disrespect me and try to and try to fucking insult me. Thinking, I guess that was supposed to hurt my feelings. <laughs> oh my god, she just said something about my tattoos and it made me cry. I think I'm gonna go and hurt myself. Girl, please, Deb. You really think that your insult about my tattoos made any difference in my damn world? Like, bitch, I don't give a fuck how you feel about my tattoos. But here's the thing. When, when, you, when people come for you or they say dumb things that's disrespectful and then you come back at them, then they get mad and they feel the need to insult you. So you want to insult me and you feel like that's going to make me feel any better or any less than. So because I did not agree with what you believe in, you want to insult me and say my tattoos on my arms are fucked up. Bitch, you wish that they were fucked up because every last tattoo on any of my motherfucking arms is far from fucked up. You can't even barely see what's on my arms and you just want to make a judgment and insult me. So, you know, because she said that, I told, I, this is where I went off. I was like, bitch, fucked up tattoos. What, you mad now? Because I called your dumb ass out so you want to try and disrespect me by talking shit. What's fucked up and dumb is you and your attitude being an African American. It's stupid. People like you that I don't tolerate because you're the first one to talk shit on the keyboard, but then you see me in person or in 
just see me in person, all that shit talking ain't nowhere to be heard. Go sit the fuck down somewhere because you're a waste of skin. And if I chose, and if I could choose, your ass wouldn't be part of the African American community. It's sad. It's people like you that act like Uncle Tom's. So then she came back at me again, talk about, oh, uh, I look like a 13 year old with tattoos. First of all, 13 year olds don't get tattoos. They don't get tattoos like this. Second of all, what you mad about? Don't act like Raven Simone on me and act like, bitch, you don't know that you were African American or where the fuck you from. And if that's the case, go somewhere with that shit, but don't come on my channel with it. And don't try to insult me and think that because you called me out about my tattoos that I'm supposed to cry about the shit and be hurt. I'm not hurt about it. What's next? You're going to say something about my motherfucking teeth or my scar right here and feel like I'm supposed to feel some type of way. Like I said, all of these keyboard thugs, because that's what y'all are when y'all typing a whole bunch of indirect or negative shit on the computer. If you don't want to be called an African American, then by all means, bitch, we won't call you African anything. I'm still an African American and proud the fuck of it. So yes, that's what I basically thought about that incident. So anyway, let's get on to the real talk. If you have a real talk about yourself or life situations or anything that you need to dish out, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, Real Talk, so that I know that it's Real Talk. And if you want to change any of the people's names in the email, meaning your name is Jody, but you'd rather be called Samantha, then by all means, let me know that in the beginning of the email, so that way I don't think of a name for you or I don't call out your name by accident. So the two um, emails... Oh. And yeah, so that's basically about it. So let's get on to this real talk. I'm going crazy. Okay, so now I can say, so the two emails that I'm going to do today, one of them is very long and very, very, like, not weird, but I was just like, are you serious right now? There is a picture attached to this. Like, oh my God. I, I just really couldn't believe what I was seeing in the picture. So I'm just going to start reading this because it's kind of long. Hey, April, I'm writing you because I really need advice. For the sake of the story, all names have been changed. I'm Alexis, and I'm 21. I've been best friends with Tiara, who is also my age, since the age of 11. We've always been close and considered each other as family throughout the years, even though our lives are very different. She has two kids and recently resorted to tricking, meaning selling her body via Craigslist out of hotels for $100. I, on the other hand, go to school while working on and off. Even though she's mad, she's made some poor decisions, I've always tried to be there for her, support her, and give her tough love by letting her know she has to do better. Because I go to school out of state, we don't get to spend a lot of time, but often make trips between Atlanta and Florida to spend time. Anyway, this last time I went to visit her, um, I went to visit her. We went all the way left. Oh, anyway, the last time I the last time I went to visit her went all the way left. A mutual friend, Aaliyah, and I went to Tiara's house, and we had a few drinks along with some other friends. Throughout the night, Tiara was acting crazy as hell. Happy one minute, upset the next, lashing out on her boyfriend. She was also unintentionally overbearing too close or too loud. I had to tell her to stop pushing me or yelling a few times, but whenever I did, she would say my bad and explain she had no wrong intentions. When I asked her what was up with her behavior, she started crying, explaining that her life was too much. She then said she wanted to privately talk, so we go into the room. We were talking and she started getting emotional, talking about how she's tired, her older sister is in prison, so she's been raising her two, blo her two boys plus her own two kids. She's crying, cussing, and yelling. I'm trying to give her a pep talk and praise her, telling her karma karma will repay her and you know just be positive. Well, she starts grabbing me by the throat. Each time I had to check her, and after the fourth time, I had had enough. And I pushed her ass down and turned to leave. But before I could start, could, could she starts breaking and throwing shit. Her boyfriend breaks down the door she runs out of the room, trash in the house. April, this girl went psycho. She broke pictures, 
tables, windows, literally anything in her path. Ali and I had had enough and were going to leave along with everyone else. As we were leaving, Aaliyah realizes, realizes Tiara broke her new $600 iPhone. Tiara isn't instantly defensive saying things. Tiara is instantly defensive saying things like, okay, well, I didn't mean to, and I broke your phone. So I intervened, telling her that's not cool. You need to apologize. So she apologizes, but in an overly drunk way, grabbing Aaliyah's face, saying, I'm sorry, baby, I'm so sorry, and being sloppy and extra. Somehow this escalated, and before I know it, they're fighting, the boyfriend is doing nothing, I had to break it up, and Tiara swings on me, and misses, but keeps trying. I'm shocked at this point, and kept asking her, what the fuck is her problem? This is after the fourth time I'm lunging, um, a time of her lunging at me, I decided to defend myself and whoop her ass the way she needs it. Now, I've been in several fights throughout my entire life, but this, this wasn't like any other fight. This was like fighting a crackhead. I mean, this girl will fall down and immediately jump back up. April, she was so drunk that she couldn't even really fight. It didn't matter how hard I hit her or how badly she got her, her ass drunk. Um, she got her ass drugged and molly -whopped. She kept going. Oh, so it didn't matter how bad she got her ass drugged and molly -wop, She kept going. She would go from fighting me to running around the house, jumping on my friend, fighting her boyfriend, being separated, her getting knives, coming back. It was just tiring. Meanwhile, while this whole thing is going on, we are trying to leave and our keys are somewhere in the house. So every time we would stop fighting, we were trying to look for her keys and then she would come back again and start again or try to hit us with a weapon or anything she could get her hands on. It was crazy. I fought her like five times that night by myself and twice with my friend and my friend fought her like five times as well. The boyfriend calmed. The boyfriend claimed he was trying to separate us but really wasn't doing anything but conven conveniently disappearing. She pulled a knife on me and I lost it. This was supposed to be my friend, my best friend. Someone I consider family. And here she is in this moment pulling a knife on me. Honestly, any kind of love or relationship, we had died in that moment. Because she didn't give a fuck, April. She was ready to take it there and I didn't give a fuck either. I was standing there waiting on my friend to collect the rest of her items and looking at Sierra waiting for her to come towards me. Oh, well, that's her real name. Mm -hmm. Tiara. Waiting for her to come towards me because she she didn't put her she actually put her real name her friend's real name and waiting for Tiara for her to come towards me before she could even try it with the knife I fucked that ass up I'm bigger than her so it wasn't nothing to slang her ass one way and make her lose the weapon but this time I didn't hold back I was enraged I really fucked her ass up and that was my intentions I was so hurt I guess there was so much adrenaline pumping in my body that I couldn't feel this bitch biting me. It felt like we were fighting for like a good 10 minutes. Earlier, we had said that we were calling the police, so the boyfriend actually disappeared. So while this was happening, he was nowhere around to separate us. And my friend was actually knocking on neighbors' doors trying to get someone to call the police. After the police came, they pointed it out that I had these big-ass chunks taken out of my arm. She continued screaming and slamming doors. Tiara continued screaming and slamming doors and breaking stuff as the police were there. I actually had to have the police go inside the house and retrieve the rest of our items and our car keys just so we could leave. The next day, um, the next day was immediately remorseful and then she texted me one million times to meet up with me with long paragraphs on Facebook and her mother called me. He had mutual friends reach out to me and honestly I wasn't as mad as I should have been. My family, on the other hand, was so irate and wanted to press charges. Um, they wanted to go find her, and they could not believe this girl, who was who has been damn near part of the whole family, would act in such a way. Anyway, April, I know that this has been a, has been long, but I guess I'm writing to you to ask what's your take on the situation. Nobody in my family feels like I should forgive her or even speak to her again. I, on the other hand, I don't have any ill feelings towards her. I'm not mad. I don't know. I just, for some reason, I can't find it in my heart to hate her like everyone thinks I should. What do you think about it? Should I forgive her? Is friendship stronger than this or should I leave that bitch in the dust? So, oh, she didn't say I couldn't show the pictures on, 
on here. So the one picture, it doesn't have her face, but it has what her arm looks like. And that is bite marks. You guys see that? That is bite marks. Like, that is like so not cool. Like, do you guys see? Bite marks and bruises. Like, wow. So, her family is basically telling her not to be friends with her anymore. They want her to basically just be done. And she can't find it in her soul or her heart to hate the girl. Hate is a strong word. Hate is like a really, really strong word. And honestly, y'all have been friends since y'all have been the age of 11. And y'all been friends for 10 years. Y'all are both 21. So, I mean, that's a really good friendship. It's a long friendship, I would suppose. But some people have things that's going on in their lives that they just really can't help their actions there's no explanation for their actions except for what are they doing what made her just bug out like this she cannot possibly just have been drunk and decided to freaking act like the walking dead and start biting you and just fighting you she had like rage in her and sometimes rage is like a mental disease you know what i'm saying for somebody to go around throwing shit and keep combating and fighting you if you molly whopped whip my ass if you molly whopped my ass and drug me all through the apartment and whop, molly whopped my whip my ass whatever y'all call it, i'm sorry but i don't think i want to fight with you no more i think i'm gonna sit my ass the fuck down somewhere and chill the fuck out if you done whipped on me enough but i guess you know what i'm saying you really don't know what your friend was going through at that moment. She already was going through a lot, being depressed, crying, selling her body. Selling your body on Craigslist for $100 is basically like selling your soul. You know what I'm saying? You really don't know. That is a very degrading feeling. And even though she's selling her body for $100 per person, you don't really know how it makes her feel. And I'm pretty sure that it doesn't make her feel good as a woman and as a person that, that she had to, you know, stoop to that level just to get some money to make ends meet. So that right there could take a toll on her and put a lot of strain and stress on her as well. I can only imagine if I had to do something like that, do you know how dirty and disappointed and disgusted I would feel about myself? You know what I'm saying? Hell, I done slept with somebody who was like, 10 years younger than me and his dick was that little and I was disgusted with myself like girl you could have just had a VA and just stayed your ass at home and you know what I'm saying but that was like we that was something done together but I didn't sell myself that was supposed to be my boyfriend but after that I was like oh but anyway I felt disgusted with myself too but it takes a lot for a person to just be okay with selling their pussy, selling their ass, just selling themselves and being okay with it. So you, you really don't know. That could really affect her mentally. And you just don't know the things that she might have been going through. She's got to take care of her two kids and her sister's two kids. Where's her family at? It doesn't seem like they helping her much if she's got her two, her, her two nephews and there's nobody around helping her. She's selling herself. She's selling her skin. Basically, she's selling her skin just to make ends meet. There's a lot going on for the girl. And I'm not justifying what she did to you as being right. But it's something wrong with her mentally. And even though you might think she's been just drinking, she could have actually had taken some type of drugs before you and your friend came over. And the alcohol may have really reacted with it in the wrong way. And that's why she became enraged like that. You know what I mean? For her to just keep going and then just... just um just spewing out how she felt and crying and happy and up and down it seems like she's having like a mental breakdown you know what I mean and yeah the bite marks I mean some things are unforgivable I totally get it you know what I mean it's hard decision for me to say if you should forgive her or, or not but I mean me as a person if I have a friend that is really, really dear to me and I know she's going through a lot because you know she's going through a lot and you try to give her pep talks and you try to give her positive, positivity, um, that's great. You did the right thing as a friend. But sometimes that could be just a little bit too late. And it's not a little bit too late on your part. This doesn't mean that it's your fault. But, you know what I'm saying, your pep talks to her may have been just a little bit too late. Maybe she reached out to you a little bit too late. Maybe she should have said something a while ago. Those pep talks that you gave to her may not have came in time. She might have been already long gone, too far gone. And it seems like it. It seems like to me, honestly, that it was not just the alcohol. There, There's more to it than that. I don't really feel like, um, well, you know what? 
there are people that get too drunk to where they act like that. My ex-husband being one of them. You know what I'm saying? Same exact reasons. That's the reasons why we are not together anymore. Because he was drunk, drunk, drunk. And I've explained this to you guys and the reasons why I divorced him. And I told you guys the real tea and what really happened. Um, it was a long video, but he got drunk, drunk, drunk. And he bit me. And I showed you guys in the video, he bit me. So I had a chunk of my freaking skin bit off. Didn't even know it until, you know what I'm saying, the police told me. And, hey, you're bleeding. You know what I'm saying? And so, I mean, but here's the thing. Him and her are totally different people. He might have been stressed, but he's constantly drinking. Always, 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 always. This has been going on for just like, we together for 17 years. I want to say like for 15 years out of the 17. Okay, so there's really no excuse, you know what I'm saying? But for her, it seems like it's a it's it's just totally different, you know what I'm saying? She's going to hotel room, she's sleeping with strange men for a hundred dollars. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not about to give you no booty for just a hundred dollars if I'm selling my stuff. That that's not a lot, okay? I mean a hundred dollars is like really like five dollars nowadays. Like my daughter Tati said, a hundred dollars really doesn't have a strong face value anymore. $100 is basically like $5. You really can't go too far on $100. And I'm sorry, but if I have to stoop down to giving you some pussy for $100, then I'm going to feel some type of way about myself. Like, yo, I'm going to need at least five. You At least a G. You have to pay for this. $100? You're just basically getting it for free. So that's like a degrade right there. So right then and there, she's degrading herself by just doing that. So I, I'm honestly thinking that she's more than just the alcohol it's more than that and it's probably shit that you just don't know you talking about she got molly wop she could have been using molly she could have been on anything any type of drug that fucked her up like that mentally and then mixed with the alcohol that girl had rage so your arm it did look really bad and i i'm sorry that you had to experience that with your friend and she really didn't have any intentions on hurting you because she did reach out to you, like you said, like a million times. Um, and sometimes you have to distance yourself from people so that they can get back on their feet and just get their shit together. And maybe right now is the best thing for you to do. It's just kind of like distance yourself. Because just like you said, you don't have it in your heart to hate her. And I would never say hate her. Because hate is such a strong word. Especially for somebody who you have so much love for and y'all have been friends. We all make mistakes. No one's perfect. And I'm not making excuses for her. But it seems like your friend is going through a whole lot, unfortunately. And she needs someone to help her. And you may not just be that person to help her because you just may not be. But maybe you can point her out in the right direction of where she can get help. Because it doesn't seem like her family is really trying to help her if she's selling her soul for $100 and taking care of her sister's two kids alone. Doesn't seem like she has many people in her corner. And her boyfriend, he do not really seem like much of a help because he wasn't even trying to stop her. He's just going and disappearing. What kind of boyfriend is that? If anything, he should be trying to figure out what's going on and resolution for the problem. Calm her down. Okay, so he broke the door down. whoop de do. But he's not really helping in the matter. So honestly, I really feel like she doesn't have anyone in her corner. And some people don't really know how to reach out for help. They It's just hard for them. They really don't know how to reach out and ask for help. And shit just bottles up and bottles up. And sometimes people just react. They explode. I'm, sometimes I'm like that. Like, I won't talk about something. But every it'll just bottle up and bottle up. And then more shit keeps happening. And more shit happens. And it's like a soda bottle. You shake up a soda bottle and it just explodes. That's how people are in general. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't say hate her. I would kind of like distance myself for her right now. But just to help her feel a little better and just to help herself heal, I would let her know, like, listen, I'm your friend. I love you to death. I understand that we all go through things and I forgive you. But I really feel like you need to get some type of support system and some help. Just tell her that at least. Because if you ignore her and you don't respond to her, you never know. That might make her go into like some type of depression. You don't really want her to hurt herself because it seemed like at the moment when she was fighting you, she didn't care if she hurt herself and you. 
or anybody else because she was getting beat up but she didn't seem to care if she was getting hurt so at that point she didn't even care about her own self and she has children to take care of so i would definitely reach out to her and let her know that you know she's forgiven and how you feel and, and just give her words of encouragement to get help but kind of like distance yourself from her for a while to make sure just to see if she can get on her feet because sometimes we lean on people because we know that they're always there so we don't feel the need to get help we don't feel the need to be on our own we don't feel the need to stand up and be strong and sometimes we have to get that tough love and we have to see that damn I'm gonna have to do this on my own because right now these people are kind of straying away from me and sometimes some people need that tough love sometimes we can't always be there because we're always constantly there for a person that's just a crutch we're just a crutch for them they're not going to get any better they're not going to do any better they're not going to stand on their own they're not going to be strong so you have to give people the tough love just like with my son i was constantly like shielding him and putting a blanket over him he's 24 years old and i left him i let him do his thing you know what i'm saying because he was just being disrespectful and you know what i left him alone and he I sent him back to new york and he got on his own. He has a good job as a welder. He's got his own car that he bought this time on himself. He has his own apartment that he takes care of. So he did it on his own because he's seen that I wasn't fucking with him like that because of the disrespect and the things that he's done to me. And sometimes you have to let a person go. You have to let them stray. And you have to let them see, like, listen, this is what you need to do. And this is what's going to be done. If you're constantly there in their corner, you're a crutch. And I'm not saying not be in their corner. But they need tough love. So by all means, give her the words of encouragement because that is a portion, a part of being tough love. But you also need to cut ties with her for the moment and let her get on her own two feet and let her get it together. But I honestly do feel like there is something else going on with her that you are just not aware of. And a lot of people don't like to say, yeah, hey, yeah, I'm a crackhead. Oh, yeah, I've been doing this. I've been doing this type of drug. They don't want you to look at them in that type of way. You know what I'm saying? So you really don't know what's going on. And her boyfriend doesn't seem like he's a great influence because he's not even trying to break up a fight that his girlfriend has started. And she's running around the house in rage, acting crazy like a maniac. And you don't have any concern about her getting beat the fuck up. Like, really, who does that? So, yeah, you don't know. You really don't know what's going on with her. But like I said, there are things that people go through in life that really degrade them and just put a lot of toll and a lot of stress on them. And selling your body is one of them, especially for $100, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't knock her, I'm not judging anybody because we all gotta do what we gotta do to make ends meet. But I would give her the support for right now, let her know that you're there and we're still friends because you don't want her to get in a state of depression. But let her know she needs to go get some help, you know what I'm saying? Go seek services so that she doesn't have to sell herself. There's all types of things out there for women with children. You know what I'm saying? And because she has her sister's two sons, she can legally get food stamps and all types of Medicaid and things for them because those are biologically not her children, and she's entitled to that. They're just like foster kids, damn right. man. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, let, um... Oh, God, I forgot her name that fast, but just let her know what you think. What would What is your opinion on the story? Okay. So on to the next one. Okay, so on to the last one. Hi, just call me Franny. I just want to say first of all, thank you for all the makeup and hair tutorials that you do. You really got me on fleek. Before you, my hair used to look like a hot mess or I would spend like a thousand on a homemade wig because I couldn't find any good stores or sites. So thank you for all the information. So anyway, sorry this email is so long. Please help. I need to see what you think about my situation. I met a guy on an internet dating site and he's wonderful and nice and considerate. Overly fine like Adonis fine with 12 pack abs. He is about 12 years older than me which is fine because I prefer them older. Anyway, I myself am 25 so guys my age and in my generation are just lost and I don't have time for that. Plus, the guy I'm talking to now may be one of the best people I've ever met in a long time. But we started out on a lie. See, what happened was he put on his profile that he was a doctor, which I thought was cool because I'm a registered nurse. So I thought we clicked very well. However, I find out later through a really funny story that he's a janitor. See, what happened was I work at a school teaching medical assistant, and I thought I saw him before, but I wasn't sure one day. Uh, but I wasn't sure. So one day I'm grading a test, and a call, and I call for the maintenance or the janitor because I lost my keys and I couldn't lock up my classroom. 
sure enough, it's him. That's why I recognized him before I even asked him when we went out on the first date. Haven't I seen him around at a hospital I work at or something? And he told me, no, no, he just got back from deworming orphans in Africa for over three years. And he doesn't know how I saw him before. So after he explained to me that he was intimidated by me because I was so young and I had already had a career that he didn't want to tell me that he was a janitor. So I let that go and we were still dating. However, there's some more red flags. One of his, one of his colleagues said that he doesn't really get into personal business, but he thinks he's married. Should I confront him? He already lied about his occupation and I saw through that. But if he's married, I'm not about to be no side chick. I'm sorry. I ain't got time for that either. What do you think? Okay, so... Sips Tea. It's green tea. It's called green tea. Soy latte tea. So, Sips Tea. Did Franny just say that this dude is 12 years older than her? She is 25. So, 25 and 12 years. He is 37 years, right? She's 25 and he's 12, yeah, 37. Okay, and she's a registered nurse and she works at a school. I'm just teaching medical assistant, but she also goes to the hospital and does rounds too, I think, from just her email. So she met the guy online dating and she, when they go on their first date, she's like, he just looks so familiar. He looks so familiar. And she's like, did I ever see you at the... At the, at the hospital. He's like, no, 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 no. I just came back from Africa. I spent three years in Africa deworming orphans. Okay, so you couldn't see me, basically. So she locks herself out of her classroom one day from teaching as a medical assistant, and she needs her keys, so she has to call the janitor, the maintenance, the janitor. Was it this nigga that came and unlocked the door for her? So, he already told her a lie about his occupation. You not only told me a lie that she was a doctor, but you went into detail. You made up a fucking story time. It's story time for that nigga. Because he just said he was in Africa for three years deworming orphans. Like, okay, that was a real exclusive fucking lie. Exclusive? You could have said anything like, no, I don't think so. I've never, I may, I've never made rounds at that hospital. But no, you said I was in Africa for three years deworming orphans. Like, okay. So you really wanted to sound like really like on point exclusive type of doctor. You some type of surgeon type of shit. So you already lied about your occupation. But you also gave me a story, a story time story. I'm pretty sure he didn't just leave it at, yeah, I was in Africa for three years and I was deworming orphans. And that was it in the story. I'm pretty sure that he added a whole whole bunch of extra shit to it that she don't have time to be sitting there telling me which I'm pretty sure he did so you not only lied about your occupation but you gave me a story time nigga a story time okay now I'm sorry but if I was grading papers and then I got locked out if that were me just to say that was me and I called and got locked out and, I, and then this doctor came as the janitor and unlocked came with his mop bucket and let me in I'd have been like hold the fuck up you work as a janitor too? Because I'm just confused right now. I would have been scratching my head like, on my wig. I'm kind of confused. Now, once I would have found out that you lied about that, you would have been cut the fuck off. Because, first of all, we're not even in a relationship. This is just a new dating thing. I don't really have time to get to know you. And from what I already know, you are a liar, a story maker, okay? That's what you are. So, therefore, since we have no ties and no relationship, I'm going to cut you off. Because you've already lied. You've already lied. And you didn't just lie and say you were a doctor. You made up a fucking story to go along with it. Okay, so what kind of doctor are you? And he felt threatened and intimidated because you already have a career. So what? He has a career too. You know, some people feel like because they don't do certain things in life that that's not their career. Okay, so what? You're a janitor or a maintenance person. That's what you're good at. That is what the fuck you're good at. And if there weren't any people like yourself, then the, then how the fuck are we going to have things to get fixed around here? So that's what you specialize in, fixing things. 
And that's great because everybody has their own skill and everybody is good at something. Just because you're not a doctor or a president or a police officer does not make you any lesser than a person, okay? And I fail, I, I hate when people feel like that when they look down on people because they're not up on their level, you know what I'm saying? There, is there really a level because you make more, than money, more money than me? You're a better person than me? It does not make you a better person than me. It does not make you more important than me. Sometimes you can be, it can make you to be... An asshole. People that are just making more money and things of that nature, sometimes they can be real assholes. You know what I'm saying? Just like, this is what I feel. You ever, I know you guys, have gone to fast food restaurants, okay? And the people that work in these fast food restaurants or these grocery stores or these warehouses, anywhere there, anywhere a job where you are on your feet all day doing manual hard labor and hard work, it's like they always get paid minimum wage. They don't get paid for their services, their hard work. And then we have people that are sitting at desks like secretaries or office jobs and they're getting paid buku bucks and you're sitting on your ass and you're really not doing much but typing on a computer. But we have those who are servicing us like ringing up our groceries, making our food, whatever, building stuff for us, fixing stuff for us. They don't get paid enough. That's my opinion, you know what I'm saying? These people work even harder for their dollar than a lot of people do that sit on their ass all day. And they don't get to be considered really important. They don't get enough pay. They're not on the food chain. They're white collar, blue collar. There's always a color to a fucking collar, you know what I'm saying? It should not matter. Everybody serves a purpose in this world. If we did not serve a pur pur purpose, then the world would not run. If we didn't have people to make our burgers to work, if we did not have people to work at the fast food restaurants, then there would be no fast food. Your ass would have to be home cooking every night. So we should be thankful for those people that can go to work and do those type of things for us, or fix things for us, or build things for us. I think that these people that work super duper hard should get the recognition that they deserve, and they should get the payment that they deserve. You know what I'm saying? Just because you know how to write up a letter and hold a pencil and type on the keyboard does not make you any better. Because I guarantee you if they were to put these certain people in a freaking warehouse or factory, they would go crazy and not even know left to right of what to do. And I'm going to be honest and say I would be one of those people. Because if you put me in a fast food joint or anywhere like that, I'm not going to know what the freak to do. I've always been used to being working in the office. You know, yes, as a kid, I did work in Burger King. But if you try to put me back there now, I would freak out. I would freak out. I would freak out because I'm not standing all day long. My, my feet and my circulation is bad. I'm not about to. But if I had to, that's what I would have to do. But so he felt intimidated by you because you had a career. He had a career too. And you could explain that to him. However, he gave you not one lie, but he gave you a bold-faced story. And once you have already met the person and they already started off lying to you, then everything else behind that and beyond that is probably a bunch of fucking lies. And if his co-worker or somebody that he knows really well but don't like to gossip told you that he thinks he's married, then he probably is married, okay? He probably is married. And what are you going to say? You're going to confront him about it and say, oh, you married? Do you really think that he's going to be honest? What you should do, if you really want to know if he's married, invite yourself over to his house. If he has not yet invited you over, you should say, hey, I want to come over and see where you live at. I want to come over and cook dinner for you. If he starts making up excuses the first time, let it go, you know what I'm saying, and see what he does the second time. If he does make another excuse, okay. All right, but if he wants to come over to your place, but he doesn't want you over, then nine times out of ten, he's got a family. However, I wouldn't even really take it that far and investigate the motherfucker. Because if you already lied to me and told me that you was a doctor, but then you made a fucking big-ass story up, then you know what? You a story time telling nigga. And nine times out of ten, you're a liar, and you make up shit, and you probably are married, or you got some other bitches on the side. And why would you want to be a side chick? Like, I'm serious. Why would you want to? So, no, I wouldn't even be bothered with him. I would fly the coop. Let his ass go. He told you he was a doctor. But did he tell you that he was deworming orphans in Africa? Like, OMG. Nigga, you really made up a bold-faced lie. Like... It's one thing to lie, but when you make up a big-ass story behind it, then you know what? I have no respect for you. You lie to keep yourself out of trouble. But then if you want to make up a bold-faced lie story, there's no, there's no reason for me to fuck with you. Like, because you just, I'm going to just think of you as a storytelling motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, fiction or nonfiction, what are you? You know what I'm saying? 
I'm just saying. So, let Franny know what you would do. And as for the internet dating site, you know what? I've done. I'm I'm done with that. I'm done with it. There's too many fucking weirdos on there. And Franny, you just met one of them. He was deworming people. Anyway, on that note, guys, I am going to go. I hope you enjoyed this real talk. Leave all your opinions below. And as always, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next video.